we are back for another episode and I'm so excited to share my experiences with you again. Last episode, we had a look into some fun behind the scenes with Charlie Sheen and the Ultratune commercials. This episode, I'm going to take you along with me on my adventures through the gorgeous Abud in Bali. We will be meeting with the godfather of rap, Russell Simmons, along with the launch of Titi Batu Club and have a look into their efforts to raise money for the people struggling in Lombok. I'll give you a sneak peek at my resort Surya Kemba Villa before I head out to have a swinging good time at their famous terrace pool swing. We'll visit my friend Oka at Sumbai restaurant and head out for some amazing artwork. Finishing up, we'll end with royalty and visit the palace with a member of the Royal Abud family, Chokwa. First off, let's have a look at my time in Abud at the launch of Titipa 2 on December 1st. So we're here at the Titipa 2 launch. It's raising money for a great charity, Lombok. And we have Charlie from East Bali Surf and Sail. Tell me a little bit about your company and where you're located. Yeah, we're located in Sanor. We run sailing and surfing, stand-up paddle, individual, private lessons. We teach absolute beginners, people just like you who aren't surfers, and we can get you up standing and having a really good time. I caught up with Russell Simmons to speak about the importance of raising money. I was here for the earthquakes and the tsunami and I saw all the suffering and uh, Oka is building this beautiful place and we said why don't we do something you know that's a celebration at the same time those people more fortunate can give back and help those people who, who need it the most and so this is why we did this party. What you doing you know for charity is amazing. TT Batu, you're doing an amazing job. The music's amazing, the swimming pool is cool. The more we can do to help the people, every little bit matters. I was talking about, like on my on my Instagram, I want people to donate. And there's a, if you look on Instagram on the Uncle Rush, you'll see that there's a, a website where you can donate money. And like even an American dollar, $10 means a lot here. I mean, it goes a long way in this economy. So any donation from anybody from around the world is fantastic for us and, and for those people. So that's the idea is to not only have party here and raise money, but to get people from around the world uh, an awareness of the suffering and maybe they can make a difference. Now I'm here with Oka, who has made this event possible, the Titi Batu Abud Club, and you're also helping Lombok. Where did it all start? You know, uh, when I met this place called Titi Batu, mean connect people. And then when I met Russell, he said he had an idea. He said, okay, why don't we do charity for Lombok and Sulawesi? And then what we wanted to create is called Samadhi Square. But it's allowed to people, when you do square, this community is going to stretch. And then the circle, we, 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 we hook it up with the circle that he said that somebody circle but this is gonna go beyond but this is what the community is about yeah helping each other when you can make good people remain good and bad people at least they try to be good and then you might form the best community Almost a month later, I was back at Titiba 2 to bring in 2019 at their New Year Eve party. Happy New Year's from Titiba 2 Bali to everybody in America, Australia, everywhere around the world. It's Arby. Happy New Year from Titiba 2 and for myself. I'm here with Russell Simmons. You played a big part in putting this event together. We were here a month ago at the TT by 2 launch. What's your New Year's resolution? Well, there are the eight levels of uh, the Yoga Sutras, right? Non-harming, non-lying, non-stealing, 
uh, control of energy and giving the best effort to the greater good and all of these things that are in scripture, right? We fall short every day. And so I like to just make an overall commitment to be a, a, a better person. Okay, now I'm here with the general manager of Titiba to Mr. Jason Derulo. Not really. Um, yeah, this is a dream job. I uh, can't lie to you now. Moving from Australia, Melbourne. Uh, now moving to Ubud. I've been here for like a good five weeks. Uh, people don't shake hands here. They hug. Yes. And that is the energy, the Bali spirit, and this is why I moved here. Actually, I'm hitting exactly where I wanted to be in my life. So with anything, I think just keep going with what I'm doing. Um, stay focused, positive, and just keep growing. So, yeah. Thank you so much. See you in there for a drink. Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much for everything. Love you lots. Love you. Next up, I'll show you the beautiful villas at Surya Kemba. What a way to kick off my time in Bali. So now it's time to enjoy the beautiful surroundings of my villa and what the terrace pools have to offer. I'm here with the beautiful Ayu, who's the manager of Surai Kamba Resort. Now, I've been staying here and it's absolutely breathtaking. Tropical forest around the villas. How long have you been here for? Surai Kamba Villas has uh, been here for X years ago. So the total room we have is uh, 23 rooms. So we have uh, three types of the two-bedroom villa and two types of the three-bedroom villa. And then we have a four bedroom villa and then seven bedroom suite by the river pier. So tell me about all the services that you offer here. So we have a spa service to come into the rooms and then we have a restaurant here and then we have a swimming pool. I did have a massage in the room and they're incredible and they're so affordable. And also for the family, uh, do you have lots of families? Do they get free entry next door? Yes, we have a many family is staying with us here yeah so they're very happy to stay with us and we have a, because we have a new facilities at the Titi Batu Ubud and what's in Titi Batu? Titi Batu Club is our new facility so there's we have a two restaurant Three swimming pool, we have a yoga studio as well. And then we have scare pot, and then we have a sauna, and a steam room. And a and gym! gym. Oh, yeah, I, I just missed the gym outside. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, and we'll make sure that we put down details, so for anyone interested, make sure you come check it out. I've stayed here, absolutely love it. Now, I'm here with Nanu, one of the owners of the Terrace River Pool Swing. I'm still shaking. I went on that swing. It was incredible. How did you come up with the idea? Because we have a good view. So that we thought that uh, swing was not just for kids, but uh, we are trying to make it for everyone, you know, who likes uh, like uh, extreme activi activities. So that was the idea before. I found the one where I was sitting on it by myself was a lot more scary. I went on with Oka first on the double swing. Are you sure we can't fall off? No, no, no. Ah! But the one by yourself and you do group swings and you've also got the flying fox. Tell me about that, it goes over the jungle. The double swing, uh, it was 
not so scary because it was just maybe for pictures and and but the second one that you tried uh, we called the swing is a uh, super super extreme so so no wonder that you are shaking <laughs> <laughs> but I'm shaking. <laughs> So many customers here. Sometimes you know they come with a group. So some of them you know uh, quite scary you know to play swing. So that's why we also created like a flying fox for them. The flying fox uh, was not. It's not as scary as uh, the swing. You know the super extreme swing. Yeah. Are you saying that because I haven't tried the flying fox yet and I'm a little bit scared to be honest? But we're doing the flying fox before I leave. But also the coffee. You make the coffee. You roast the 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 roasted beans yes uh, you know here we uh, also make uh, like uh, you know like uh, one of the uh, most famous coffee in the world uh, called luwak coffee uh, as I know you know like uh, a lot of uh, traditional coffee farmers here in Bali they grow coffee uh, but uh, I'm trying to find like uh, an international market for the coffee luwak so after uh, I created uh, this place. So this place uh, was designed, you know, for tourists come, uh, who come to Ubud uh, to enjoy, you know, the coffee, the view, and the activities. And also here, the the process of making raw coffee is uh, in still in the traditional way. So it's like an education, uh, you know, like uh, for for the tourists who comes to Bali uh, to see the traditional process of making coffee. Yeah, I did notice it's more than just obviously the swings and the coffee. It's it's really big here. Like I'm still out of breath. We walked all around and you've got the temple and there was that King Kong. What's that? Like, what are all those? So the King Kong, you know, like uh, before uh, when we uh, uh, made the rice terraces, so we found the spot uh, was not uh, suitable for uh, making a rice terrace. It was like a rocky, you know, spot. So I I worked together with one of uh, with my friends here, and my friend uh, he has got like a talent, you know, in carving. So the idea came from him, you know. He said to me, "Why not we have to make with something like maybe a King Kong face here, but for for tourists, uh, you know, for taking pic pictures." So so I said, "Why not just do it?" Yeah. No, you have a lot of beautiful things. There was, I felt it was, what's it called, the nest. I was in, I climbed up and the big circle. Is there a meaning, a spiritual meaning behind all that? I just make it, you know, for the uh, photo spot. Yeah, but the circle one, you know, we, it has meaning, you know, according to our spiritual reason. Yeah. Well, I've absolutely had a fabulous day. Thank you so much. And I'm a little bit nervous and excited to try the flying fox. So shall we? Next, we'll take a look at some amazing artwork and sit down with a member of the Royal Abud family, Chokwa. Bali is one of the most beautiful places on earth and there are so many things to do here. Apart from dancing and swinging, I do love a good meal. So let's go meet Oka at his restaurant Sumbai. Now I'm here with Oka, the owner of this incredible restaurant. Now tell me a little bit about the name. Yeah, the name of this restaurant is called Sambal Mata. Sambal is a, is a hot sauce. Hot sauce. Yes, uh, mata is a raw ingredient that we put in a hot sauce. It's like uh, shallot, a uh, bit of garlic, galanga, 
and a little bit of ginger. So all the, the, the exotic spice that we find in Bali. But and then the most important is in Sambal Mata that we have called ginger flower. It's only have in this island. So that's why very keen for me to use the name of Sambal Mata because everybody loves hot sauce. And mata is all these ingredients will fit for any type of food. So it's an Asian fusion. So based on the freshness of the ingredient that we found on this island. So we limited the, the import stuff on this, you know, because we wanted the freshness. And then it's almost like seasonal food. Yes. So all year round. All year round. And then, you know, so you, 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 you get the best produce for, for the season, you know. So it's... Uh, and yeah. what would your signature dish be here? Yeah, our signature dish is, uh, we call it, uh, uh, our, our fish tacos is very amazing. Yes. And we also have uh, one different than anybody else, is uh, black bow. I noticed there's no cars and you had something to do with that. Can yeah. you tell me the story behind that? The story is uh, like this, yeah. the name of the road is Gotama. Gotama is, uh, uh, is a Buddha. Buddha yes. Gotama, he sit in the middle of, uh, you know, underneath the body tree. So, well, we we stop the traffic, so we don't allow the car at night, so we don't have to smell the fuse of our car, you know, in the street. And then, that's the reason why this street is very popular. But I think you uh, broke a few rules tonight. I saw where you parked your motorbike, and it says, <laughs> if you're a good man, please don't park here. So did you break the rules, Oka? I know the rule. The, the rule I exist to be broken. You know, it's like that's where the rule I exist there. You know, so I'm a bit of naughty boy a little bit. You know, <laughs> actually the first people who build ubud is Australian. I grew up with them. Listen to Paul Chisel and Midnight Oil. You know, I, I listen to Australian music. It's, it's really strange, you're right. The yeah. Australians tend to be Samyak, yeah. Shangu, Cha I never say the words yeah. correctly. But um, a Buddha is growing, so I think more Australians will come. And it's a lot more spiritual. What If you had to compare it, what would the three top points of a Buddha be? Yeah, I think here, number one, is about uh, the culture. I think uh, uh, we have very strong bond with Australian because we are very close to each other. I think. One thing that we have the same, uh, we are very straightforward people, yes. you know, so I think it's, uh, we speak from the heart, um, well, it's the place for them to, to be, really. So let's do a message for the Australians, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, 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 oi. Now I've fed my belly, it's time to feed my brain with some history with G'day, the owner and art enthusiast of Sayaja Art Gallery. I'm here with G'day and your incredible gallery, it's the, the biggest with carvings, with artwork. How do you pronounce the name of the gallery? Siaja Gallery. Siaja. What does that mean? Uh, that's uh, my father's name, my family name is Siaja. Yes. Yeah. And my gallery is uh, since 1955, since my grandfather and I hand it to my father Siaja and then I'm the third generation of the gallery. So it's been handed down generation, down generation, three generation, yes. And uh -huh. you have so much to show me. So how about we uh, have a look at some yep. of your favorite carvings and yep. paintings? Come along. Okay. I'll show you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Borobudur is the largest Buddhist temple in the world. This okay. is about Borobudur in uh, East Java. And so there are Buddhists in East Java. Yes, uh huh. Yeah. So this is the monks that celebrate of the ceremony in Borobudur Temple. This is Ganesh. Uh, yes. We believe that Ganesh protect us uh, from the bad thing in our our society. And this is made of a Chinese coin. This the is. Oh, I can Chinese say it's coin, all Chinese yes. coins. And this the Chinese coin is made of from. Uh, 13th century. Wow, so it yeah, has it's a lot old, of meaning. It's old Chinese coin, but it's recently made, recently made for the sculpture. The Chinese coin is really old antique since yes. 13th century, but for the sculpture itself, it's made recently, wow. maybe about two years ago. So yeah. how long would it take to make that? Six months. Six months? Yes. Yeah. 
there's a lot of um, romantic sculptures, even with the animals like kissing. Oh wow, look at this one, it's a bit sexy. We send a lot to America, Canada, to uh, uh, Russia, to Indonesia of course, and Australia. America is our biggest collector. Thank you so much and I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the biggest gallery in Ubud. Make sure you come check it out. It's not every day I get to meet royalty, but I was humbled and honoured to walk within the palace walls and to meet Chokwa, a member of the Ubud royal family. Now I'm here with Chokwa, a member of the Ubud royal family. Thank you so much for having me. Your palace is definitely one of the most beautiful homes I've ever seen and you have it open for everyone to enjoy as well. Tell me about the story of how it all began. Well, uh, first of all, it's all my pleasure. Actually, to be honest, I really feel uh, happy because that's a part of my mission. We are welcome to everybody. The purpose why I built this house, I want to really do something that would come from my mind, come from myself, all the designs, there's so much attention to detail and a lot of it's 24 karat gold. How long did it take you to design and build and where did you get your inspiration from? To be honest, I'm sorry to say this, uh, I'm start building this house 2007 and then till now is 2018. That's been 11 years already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. I think it's uh, unusual like that. And and your father, like, he, he did he inspire you? Did you get a, a little bit of advice from your father? He recently passed, which I'm very sorry to hear. Uh, I really hope that one day uh, my father will be happy with this, uh, what I have done. But fortunately, 2008, he passed so he doesn't know anything about this house how it's gonna look but I'm sure I'm sure there is a power behind me and also give me uh, an idea so just I just follow it uh, no I did notice you're so humble and you do treat everyone equally and you want everyone to feel like they're all one joined as a family and just seeing the ceremony today and how the family how much more you can achieve when you join all together as one. When we do something together, and then people support you, and then they have pure heart to support, it means something positive with me. It's gonna be, the outcome gonna be very nice, and also bring all the aura of this house getting better and better. I heard you're very good at music. I'm, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I should say, uh, I'm good in music, but I don't know for other people. Uh, for other people, if I'm playing, if that's mean good, well, that's good. <laughs> I'm not as good as you said. Probably, I don't want to gonna say I'm a good in playing instrument. Uh, it's not. It's not polite to say that. So I just want to let someone listen and of course it's all yours but i will say something uh Joa is the, the most genuine person i ever met in my life i always support him we grow up together but the most important is very genuine this is the most important that's the way i love him very much Thank you for watching Out and About with Rosanna Ferracci and make sure you stay tuned for next month's episode. See you then.